uh, don't call it a comeback. <laughs> it's Reggie Miller. It, 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 oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Reggie Miller, the uh, Hall of Famer. He's on the call for <laughs> Miami and Milwaukee tonight, and you are back. I'm back, baby. <laughs> the gang is all back, Polly. Thank you, Polly. Way to bring it, baby. Yeah, Way to bring yeah, it. Yeah, Polly goes. Uh, Reggie sent me a text about a song he wants to pl- have played. A walk up. You got a walk up song. I wanted a walk up song. It's been a while, so anytime it's been a while, you got to have a walk up song, and that's LL Cool J. All right. I'm badass. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? Here, first of all, let me ask you a question. All right. When did hitting dudes in the junk become a thing? What did they not what, do it in what, your day? No, but maybe they did. Here's my thinking: because of technology and everything has gone to video replay, you have the ability to do that. Maybe guy, well, guys are getting caught now. Maybe they did it back in my day because we didn't have these modern advances. So maybe they did, but th- this is weird, don't you think? Well, Chris Paul's been doing it for quite some time, right? This isn't just now with Dylan Brooks or Joel no, I don't think it's just now. Well, I'm going back to when I played. I okay. didn't play with Chris Paul. Okay. So... This this generation, he's part of this generation. But so when did this generation? But let me ask you about the the villain now, as opposed to the villain when you played. Because Draymond Green wants to be a villain; he embraces it. Dylan Brooks is blaming the media that now he's being viewed as a villain. <laughs> I embrace it. If you know, if you're Dylan Brooks and you want to be known for this, because nobody cares if you score 18 points, but they care about you, or you you get people talking about you. Back in your day. A villain was, what, a tough guy? Charles Oakley, Rick Mahorn, Anthony Mason. but My Davis boys. Yeah, but, um, but they weren't it, here's being. The, here, here's the thing about being a villain, because there's being a villain and being a villain with game. I think I was vilified, but I had game. I talked a lot of trash, but I could back it up. I don't think Draymond Green is a villain, because – to me, I put him in the same categories of someone like a Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman was a villain, but Dennis Rodman had game. He could back it up. Draymond Green has game. You're not a defensive player of the year if you don't have a game. You don't win four championships. And I know people are going to say, well, you know, he's playing with Steph and, and Clay. You don't win four championships without having a game. So I'm not putting Draymond Green in the, the whole villain thing. Because he has accolades to back up. Yeah, but he the, plays dirty. Action. Rodman wasn't a dirty player. Rodman was just well, a. He, I don't. He uh, was, I thought he was. I, you could ask the mailman if he's if he's dirty. Oh, or not. he just tangled up with mailman. Uh, I thought he was. Uh, I thought he was brilliant. You could, you could ask the cameraman if if he's. Well, dirty no, that was wrong. That was okay. Wrong. Yes, right, but well. Draymond is kicking people on the floor. Draymond's a villain. He's a great yeah, – he's a very good player. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's going to be a Hall – he has game to back it up. Yeah. He's going into the Hall. Yeah. Dylan Brooks is not going into the Hall. Okay, why doesn't Dylan Brooks just if, – if you want to talk trash about LeBron or disrespect him, don't then not talk to the media and then blame the media for how you're viewed by, you know, the officials and, you know, the public in general. Uh Theodore, first let me say this. I think that was a brilliant move by Dylan Brooks. I really do. That it was brilliant because um, what he was what he was trying to do was blow up the whole Lakers game plan because he thought oh, yeah. he could get LeBron to fall for the bait. He thought LeBron was going to fall for the bait, try to come out, be aggressive, and get away from the game plan, which is to force feed Anthony Davis, because the Lakers are only going to go as far as Anthony Davis will take him. As great as LeBron is, the greatest player of his generation, top three, top two player of all time, he was trying to get him to rip up the game plan, come after me, and for the Lakers to go away, and LeBron didn't fall for it, and you saw the beat down they put on on the Grizzlies. So actually, it was a brilliant play by Brooks to come out and, and 
and do all this and say all that. Well, you can say it. LeBron wasn't going to fall for it. And I said that on the show. He doesn't care about Dylan Brooks. And the game plan is not to put up 40 on him. He's correct. Been, it, yeah. It's 30, 12, and 8. Yes. Yeah. That, Anthony that, Davis can put up 40, and that would be yes. part of the game plan here. Uh, yes. How does this play out tonight? Lakers. Well, here's the thing. I, I think Jaw and the Grizzlies figured out something, especially in the fourth quarter, that they've got to play. The pace has to be much higher. And when you were getting beat down like that in the first half, it was a humbling experience. And I think the Grizzlies figured out we got to play faster. And Jaw looked good. I mean, 22 consecutive points. But can he do that for an extended period of time for 48 and then make, and then make shots? Um, it's all in the Lakers' court, right? I mean, this is a chance for you to uh, squeeze hold of this series, go up 3-1. Um, it is going to be a fantastic matchup. You got to win this game. You got to win this game. If you're the Lakers, you, this is it. Because you don't want to go back. And by the way, we are calling – Game five back in Memphis. So I'm looking forward to that. So selfishly, it would be nice if Memphis won and it was 2-2. But if the Lakers win and go up 3-1, it's obviously it's a must win for, for the Grizzlies. You got game four tonight, Miami against the Bucks. And do you know if Giannis is playing? We do not know. I would assume he is because very much the same way we were just talking about Memphis and the Lakers. Tonight's the night. This is it for the overall number one seed in the playoffs, the, the Milwaukee Bucks. Because if you lose tonight and go down 3-1, teams that are down 3-1 have gone on to win 95% of the time. So I would assume in my heart that Giannis plays tonight. Also questionable tonight for the Heat is Jimmy Butler. I think he hurt his glute. Um, in game three so that's going to be something that they're going to monitor but all the chips if, if we're playing poker if you're milwaukee all the chips have to be in the center of the table tonight and i think Giannis plays tonight and because they can't afford to go down three one because it's a wrap the warriors and the kings uh, the warriors gave sacramento everything and sacramento went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them which has to be encouraging for them going back home what do you take away from this series so far after four games? Be careful what you ask and wish for. Because leading up to these playoffs, everyone was trying to get in line, and the Warriors will admit to this, to get that number six seed so they could go against the green Sacramento Kings who hadn't been in the playoffs for 17 years. And I kept telling people, be careful what you wish for because they've got two things going for them. They're hungry. And they've got youth on their side. So I knew going against Golden State, they've got a head coach who knows every bit of that organization inside and out in Mike Brown. And they've got a guy in De'Aaron Fox, speed kills. And that's always been the problem with, in, in terms of players that has generally given the Warriors problems. So De'Aaron Fox was going to be a problem for them. And Sabonis has been okay, but it's been the Malik Monks. Murray had a signing last night. Those guys, uh, Davion Mitchell, those guys have really put the hammer down. And I see this going seven because that missed shot by Barnes yesterday, yeah. that could have been the end of the dynasty. And I'm going to, and people don't talk about this a lot about Stephen Curry, as great as he is the greatest shooter our game has ever seen. I want people to give him credit on that last play defensively. He started off on Fox, kept him in front, made him give up the ball when Draymond Green came over and challenged Barnes for that shot. People want to talk about the offense. I just want to give Curry love defensively. That was his best stop arguably ever in his career on that last play. Reggie Miller, Hall of Famer. He'll be on the call in Miami. Bucks in the heat. This just in from Shams. Giannis will be in the lineup tonight, barring any setbacks. Game two and three, he missed those with a lower back contusion. 
Okay, well, it, it, here we go. Because let's say this. We did game one, Kevin and I, and even when he went down, Miami was in control of that game in the first quarter. And who's ever won the first quarter has won the games. Game one, it was Miami. Game two, Milwaukee won the first quarter. Game three, it was all Miami. So here we are tonight. You've got the two-time MVP, a finals MVP, hasn't played the last really two and a half games because he only played maybe a quarter in game one. Um, let's see what his health is. He only knows how to play one way, right? With reckless abandon. So you know he's going to be hitting the deck. How does he respond to that, Theodore? How does he respond to the contact and the physical play? And the bigger question is, can Miami continue to shoot the basketball this well? 55% from the field. They're shooting 50% from three. This offense has been terrible yeah. all season long. And now in three games here in the first round, they found their offense. Can they continue to shoot the basketball well? Are you all in on the Knicks? Uh, in this first round, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had picked them to beat Cleveland in the first round, just for the simple fact, three of the five starters for Cleveland zero playoff experience and it it looks like that they look like deer in, in headlights especially playing in the mecca and if you're not ready for the mecca it'll eat you up and that's exactly what that nick fan base and team has done so i knew the knicks would win this first round i'm more interested to see how they will form in the second round versus either one of these teams miami or milwaukee that would be a fun series to call and watch. I've been bringing this up with NBA guests here the last two weeks. I don't know why I'm fixated on it, but how will history remember Kawhi Leonard? Well, it, you know what? You can't erase two championships, one with a organization that was used to winning with the Spurs, and he was more so known as a defender on that team, but that's why he won finals MVP because of the work he did against LeBron. But look, that Toronto run came out of nowhere, right? No one expected that. And again, I know Golden State, they had injuries during that. And what if, what if KD didn't get hurt? What if uh, Clay didn't get hurt? But you can't control that. You can only control what I do, what they did. They ended up winning the championship. Um, it hurts because I love Kawhi. And I know how much of a competitor he is. But, again, the game of basketball is not like a light switch. You can't just turn it on and turn it off when you want. I've never been a big fan, a proponent of load management. I'm somewhat old school. You, If you're able to play, you play because that's the way you condition your body. And him not playing a certain amount of games and then you got to quickly turn it on. It's a shock to the system. It's a shock to the body. I'm not saying that's what led to this injury, but the basketball gods know. And if you can play, play. That's kind of what I'm saying. But do you think that he has not, I, it's not fair to describe it this way, but played through injury to play? Actually, I, it, it's almost like he needs to be right. a, a certain percent that, that this, I, hey, I'm, I might play 60 games this year. That's the plan. Instead of playing, I could play maybe 65 to 68, but I might not be, you know, 100%, 80%. I can only speak to myself, and this is how I always view things in injuries when I would have a turned ankle or whatever. Me at 70, 75%, 80% is better than a lot of shooting guards at 100%. That's how I felt in my head. Kawhi Leonard at whatever percent you play at, would be better than most small forwards slash power forwards at any percent. That would be the only thing I would say to that because he is too good, too talented. And at times, no one is 100% this time of year. You've got to be able to play through it. That, to me, that's what you've got to be mentally strong to play through it, Theodore. Well, will history be kinder to Dwayne Wade or Kawhi Leonard? Definitely Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade played through injuries, right? Okay. How, he, they made a commercial about that. Fall down six times, get up seven. They but, made commercials but about that. Better player. Well, Dwayne has more championships, right? Three to two, I believe. Right? Who do you want starting for you? 
playoff game. Between those, between those two, give me Flash. You take Dwayne Wade over Kawhi. Give me Flash. Okay. What about give me Flash? If I gave you Nowitzki over Wade Dirk? or or Kawhi. Wade or are you going to tell me who the rest of my team is? <laughs> no, that's your star. That's your leader. Game seven playoff. Give me Flash. Okay. Give me Flash. That dude, give me Flash, man. I think I'd take Kawhi. Healthy. Game seven? Yeah, healthy Kawhi. Now, he won't be there for game five or game six, but game (laughs) seven, he's going to be there for game seven, and I'm going to take him in game seven. Man, give give me Dwayne Wade when he won his first championship over Dallas without LeBron, without Chris Bosh. Give me that dude. I'll take that dude versus anyone. Are you sold on the Suns? I am. It's theirs to lose. But how fun is that second round matchup going to be with Denver? Woo-wee! Is it going to be fun? Uh, yeah, because here's the thing. They're going to have to find an answer for Jokic. Well, they're not going to have an answer. They're not going to have an answer for him. It's just Denver has to show up as a team. And that's that's where I get nervous because I don't know. KCP, Aaron Gordon, um, Bruce Brown. They've got three guys that are going to have to defend Booker and KD. Uh, I think their their depth has helped them. Um, I think it's going to be a great uh, – that's going to be a six, seven-game series. Durant, but I'm still, but I'm still going with Phoenix. But is Phoenix led by Booker or led by KD? To to your point, in a game seven, Kevin Durant. Okay, he's the best player. He'll always be the best player on the floor between the two teams. Steph Curry had a uh, bad moment there yesterday. What do you mean? The timeout. What are you talking about? He called a timeout. They didn't have a timeout again. Uh, he, he, he pulled a Weber. Is that no, what you're saying? No, it's not a Weber because Weber was in a national title game. <laughs> this is a playoff game. Don't you have a coach whose job is to tell yes. you? And it's not the yes. head coach. You have yes. an assistant coach whose job is to tell you how many timeouts. It has nothing to do with coaches. Curry should know better. He should. You're right. He should know better. Yeah, yes. it has nothing to yes, do with a coach telling him, I agree. by the way, we have no timeouts. All players know your timeout situation. So let's not say this is a coach's fault for not telling one of the greatest players of all time that you had a timeout. No. I'm gonna so, I'm gonna have one of our guys do an impression. You tell me if you know who this is, okay? Gotcha. All right. A monster dunk by Giannis. Don't you worry about his back. The Greek freak is back. Milwaukee was down 6-1 at the start and are now on a 12-2 run. 13-8 bucks with 7.36 left in the first. Eric Spolster wants to talk things over. We'll step aside and pay some bills. You're watching exclusive coverage of the Eastern Conference playoffs on TNT. That's my guy. The voice. (laughs) That is my... First of all, where's your up high, down hard, or... They're playing Twister on the floor. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, That's the voice, Kevin Harlan. I think Fritzy sounds more like Kevin Harlan than Kevin Harlan does. There. <laughs> Just saying. Man, see, imitation is the sincerest form, right? Yes, it is. How's, okay. the, how's the family? The, the family is great, and they say hello. They're excited that we're starting our month-and-a-half journey. Dan S., we're back together. It's going to be a great playoff run. Polly, cue the music. No, LL no, 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 Come we, on, we can't. We, we, we got one that, that the edited version is what we need. Cue the music, Polly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Marvin, do you have the music? Come on, Marvin. You can do just You're a little bit. The moment has passed. Just a You can just do the beat. You can do the instrumental. Come on. What kind of organization are you running there, Theodore? Oh. He's Reggie Miller. <laughs> Hall of Famer. 
Yeah, we got to get out before uh, LL Cool yeah. J slips one by the goalie again. Uh, he'll be on the call, the Bucks and the Heat tonight. We'll uh, get to your phone calls coming up. Take a break. See you, Reg. Back after this.